Hello, hello. Good evening, folks. We are here for a very special NES stream this week. All righty. Hopefully, hold on, let me turn on the game audio. Hopefully you can hear that and you can see the game and you can hear me and uh, all is well. Let me know how, let me know how that sounds. Okay, so figure out this, this new uh, configuration for my computer. It's like over here, mic's over here. I want to talk when I'm looking at the screen, but the microphone's over here. Let's see how we do this here. All right, hey Adam, how's it going? All right, hear me loud and clear. All right, let me go through the the welcomes real quick. Even though I I uh, shared some of your comments uh, when I when I was getting ready. Uh, Skletz, hello, how are you? Dire fifty one, Great White North, Fast Starwind, the Game Beaters, and MT's here. MT has uh, contributed his his uh, expertise for this game a bit. Um. Uh, let's see, Vash Starwind, hello, Timothy Applegate, <laughs> already starting with the Princess Bride uh, references, excellent, well done. Um, I like the Game Beaters uh, Game & Watch version stretch goal. Yeah, I modified my, my start screen for this, I wasn't going to, but then I was like, oh, I kind of want to do something different, something special, and I realized that it's actually very easy to configure, so I should do that more often for, for more games, I think I will. Um, let's see... So Skletz asks, is this actually a Princess Bride fan game, or is it just that the main character looks like the Dread Pirate Roberts? It's more that. There are, I, I'd say there's like definitely a very heavy influence from the Princess Bride. Um, it's like many characters are, are, are being clearly clearly characters from the from the book and the movies. Um, but it's not a Princess Bride game, if that makes sense. Um, so uh, yep. Right, the description, cool, cool. Yes, there's a, um, in, in the description, there is a, well, I don't have a link to the Kickstarter in the description because I'm not sure about YouTube's algorithms. I'm not sure how that works. Um, so that's why it's at the bottom of the screen, but it's pretty easy to find on, on uh, Kickstarter if you like. Uh, hello, Haley. Um, thank you for the tweet and the kind words. It's good to see you back. And NES is what brings us together today. <laughs> Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. This is great. Um, Dave is here. Hello, Dave. And, uh, yeah, like what MT said about the inspirations. And Adam's here. Hi, Adam. It's really good to see you back. Saw you were playing Rocket League. I was like, I, I didn't know Adam played that. I, I played, like, 10 minutes of Rocket League once upon a time. I know Kevin Hanley and other uh, homebrew developers really into Rocket League, and I should play more more of it. Um, I wish I had been playing it when the DeLorean was available. If I had a DeLorean, I'd play it all the time, just saying. And Jordan's here. Hello, Raftronaut. Raftronaut, kind of hard to say. Raftronaut, one of the developers of this game. Uh, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you appreciated it. I saw those cutouts that you posted earlier today, the sprite cutouts, and I was like, that looks very similar to what I set up for my, my title screen, my start screen. Yeah, right? This is, uh, I was looking back, so, so, full disclosure, I'm one of the, I've, I've been one, one of the playtesters for this game, I've been very happy to be contributing what, what insights I can to the development of this game. I look today, I guess I've been playing it for like a year and a half. These guys have been putting a ton of work and a ton of time to this because they want to get it right. Like they're not rushing the game out. Um, so, so like this, this game is like the culmination of a ton of hard work, a ton of people play testing it. A lot of thoughtfulness went into the game. It is, it is as good a game as it can be pretty sure unless we find any bugs tonight, knock on wood. Um, and I really appreciate that the fact that like they, they just didn't settle for like good enough. Like they, they really wanted to get it, get it right. And, um, and it, and it shows it's on Kickstarter. It's already funded. Um, but more money is great. <laughs> more copies out there is great. Um, so please go and support it. You can get a, a ROM for like 10 bucks and you can get a physical cartridge and you can get a CIB copy and all that stuff. Gin master. Hello. Thank you. Uh, so I have played through the game several times. Um, I'm assuming I can do it tonight. Um, the last time I tried to do a full playthrough of this, it took me a really long time, like longer than it should have. But I did it in a couple, in under two hours, I think. 
Um, so it really just depends on how, like, how, what my game is tonight, how I can, how I manage this. Jump Nasty, hello. Um, Mateo Incognito, back this one right away. Yeah, well, me too. And I am, I am backing the game. I, I'm backing a CIB copy because I do believe in it and I want to support my friends. Um, my homebrew, my homebrew friends or, um, acquaintances, internet friends. <laughs> Um, did I see Freak of Four come in? I saw, hey, Freak of Four. My, my thing stopped scrolling. I don't know what's going on with this. Oh, my thing stopped scrolling. That's weird. Let me see what's going on here. If I click on that. Okay, there we go. That was weird. My chat list stopped scrolling. All right. I am going to get started soon. Um, I just want to make sure I say hi to everyone. World record speedrun attempts. Yeah, the White Hat 94 has got that locked in, I'm pretty sure. He's also one of the playtesters. <laughs> Um, got that Rugrats game and this budget in for this month. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely getting the, the, the Rugrats game now that I know that the Steam version comes with it uh, for free. So I have the demo loaded on my EverDrive. I haven't played it yet. I'm going to play it at some point. Um, probably not tonight, but soon. Rachel Ryan, hello. All right. The game, Rugrats game looks like witchcraft. Yeah, it looks it looks like it shouldn't be able to run on the NES, but there it is. All right, so here we go. I'm going to get started. This is a press copy. Wait, you're not hearing game audio? Is it too low? Game audio is on. You should be able to hear it. I turned it up a little bit more. Let me know if you hear it now. It, it was possibly um, when I talk, the game audio goes lower. So I'm probably drowning it out is the thing, but I turned it up a little bit more as well. It's hard to it's hard to gauge like the the audio levels because sometimes the switch like blows out the audio, and that was the last thing I was streaming. I was I was playing Alien Isolation on Sunday. So let me know if I need to adjust anything else. Um, yeah. So this is a press copy. It was funny because I saw John Riggs uh, stream this recently. I saw his video after the fact, and he had a press copy, but he had unlocked the. Um, the so here's a table of contents with like different options he had unlocked the hard mode on it and he had the achievements thing he was able to display the credits so i don't know if he had a different press copy rom or if he actually played through the game and, and finished it maybe he says so in the in the stream i don't i don't recall but there is an there's a normal mode and then there's an easier mode so which eliminates like knockback i believe i think that's the only difference and there's a sound test as all good games have and, oh, here's the credits. So the credits are in here. So we can let that run for a second here. <laughs> Thanks, Freak of Four. Um, yeah, I mean, this Nathan Tolbert and Jordan Davis. Bite the Chili and Raft Labs. Um, Space Raft is also a really good game. And Guna is also a really good game. The, check out everything these guys these guys make. They've they've been around for a while. Graphics, gra graphics Advisor, MT. Um... Yeah, these are all good people. I, it's it's I hang out in the um, in the homebrew game club uh, Discord, which all of you should be part of, and we all get to hang out with the homebrew developers, and it's it's really cool because we all just love. Hey, Gin Masters, there. We all just love homebrew games and the NES, and um, we talk about homebrew, but we also talk about other games and other stuff. There's lots of great topics. Homebrew Game Club is going to be streaming this game next week, I believe. They also um, worked on the fantastic trailer for the Sword Sword. Like you need to check that out on the Kickstarter if you if you don't do anything else, at least look at the the trailer. I only looked at it today for the first time because I was like, I know what this game is, but I hadn't looked at the trailer yet, and it was great. So uh... <laughs> press copy, select, start. Where's the copy button? <laughs> um, yeah. So. So that's, that's, yeah, I don't have the hard mode unlocked on this. That's okay. We're not playing hard mode anyway. We're going to play normal mode. Uh, Begin story. We're going to get going. The evil sorcerer Vector, cursed to forget his one true love, sought to find a magic sword told to contain all the world's stories. He conquered the kingdom where it lay buried. Vector's brigands unearth the lost sword from beneath the old city. Two heroes rush to intercept it before it reaches his citadel. And so begins the struggle for the storied sword. I do love the story in this game, and uh, I helped um, proofread it. I think uh, Solgus uh, Bo also helped proofread it and, and gave some some story um, story feedback to it. 
<laughs> Where's the copy button? Meanwhile, at Vector's floating citadel, instruct my brigands to find the sword and bring it to me. I will use it to break the curse. And remember the name of my one true love. Yeah. No no spoilers yet, but Vector's story is kind of kind of tragic. Um, I hope this looks okay. I was playing. I was thinking about maybe streaming this on my Mister because I haven't actually seen this like firsthand in like clear graphics. But um, I've only been playing it on my CRT, and everyone else is going to be playing it on like an emulator probably or the Mister or whatever. So I figured let me be one of the people who plays it on like original hardware. So this is on an EverDrive on my on my front loader NES. And I'm playing it on a CRT. This is as authentic as it can get without the um, official cartridge, which I will be getting eventually. <laughs> Slow down there, Keldor. <laughs> All right. The candle has been lit. Vector seeks the sword and must be stopped. You've earned your funeral, Vector. Your reign will be brief and painful. All right. So you can choose between uh, Cedric or Orchid. Uh, they're both really good. Orchid um, is kind of nice because her attack is like she has like an overhead swing with her sword, which can help, especially if you're fighting like birds. This game has a lot of birds in it. Uh, thank you, Ninja Gaiden. Um, looks pretty good for real hardware. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, front loader running through composite into a retro tank 2x mini, and then out into like 480 480p. Anybody want a peanut? Oh, hold on to that one, Ty Lord. We'll, we're going to need that one soon. Hey, zombie. How you doing? Um, all right. So I'm going to play just as Cedric. He's like the, the... You can actually switch characters like whenever you start a stage, I think, or whenever you die. So. Hey, Brad Smith. No, it's not out just yet. Um, the Kickstarter's live, though. So I'm playing the press copy of it. Um, just live streaming it to share the share the game, show it off a little bit here. Hopefully, I won't I won't play really poorly. I have played this a lot, but I'm I'm not great at it. I'm not I wouldn't say I'm an expert yet. I think uh, White Hat played through it in like less than half an hour or something like that, like 26 minutes or something. I'm like, okay, I don't think I can do that. There's some sections on this like the, that are very hard and that I consistently get stuck on um, briefly, but I have I have I have finished this at least a few times. Good to see you, Brad. So yeah, you got you got this swinging sword. And you got goats. Actually, I want this. Can I get that? No, I have to go. No, you got wall jumping. I'll go up this way and get it. So all you have to do. Oh, jeez. Really? All you have to do to wall jump is you just press the button, like the A button to, to wall jump. You don't have to uh, press the direction. But I do keep pressing the direction anyway, and sometimes that messes me up. Just years of, of playing other games with wall jumping, you know. Wall jumping is 100% uh, better than the wall jumping. So you, when you when you pick up a, a, a weapon, you can, you have this like ranged weapon, which is very helpful. And there's a few different ones. This is the the axe, which I, I really like. Um, but you'll see. And uh, the jumping is also the Batman. The video game is like one of the sort of the the re references, I guess, for this. But I think the wall jumping in this is better than the. Oh, that bird got me. Is better than Batman, the uh, the video game, which is also always kind of tricky. Like the Batman, the Batman uh, wall jumping is very good, you know, and it's a it's a core mechanic in that game. But it's it can be really hard because you have to be very precise, and you you have to be precise in this. But it's it's just it feels different. So. And better than the wall jumping in Ninja Gaiden? Uh, maybe. Oh, here's the flame wheel. That's very nice. The flame... Uh, do they call it a flame wheel? Thank you. I think so. There we go. It's not a wheel, though. So one thing I really like about this is the level design. Because... 
it's like you have the whole area just like laid out before you and you're just kind of looping around through it. It just feels like a real space, right? And um, and it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Ugh. Um, there are definitely some some jumping quirks, but they're similar to jumping quirks you would have in like something like Journey to Cilius. Um, it's sort of like, there's like a little bit of, you can't really arrest your motion too much once you jump. It's sort of a Castlevania kind of thing. Um, so there's like very little control over, over your motion, like once you've, you've committed to it, but there, you can adjust it slightly. I like to kind of do like little nudges like this. If I have to do like a short jump, which is kind of how I get through some, some jumps in journey to Cilius. All right. So we'll, we'll take out this boss. Or we'll pause here, um, and let me catch up on the chat real quick here. Okay. Vinny! Hey, Vinny. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's really good. And it, sometimes it doesn't translate that well to, to people who are watching. It feels really good to control. Hey, Brightburns. Um... I think I could see them. I'm close enough to a big city to see them, but I'm probably not going to bother. Um, I don't always go for those re-releases if I've actually originally seen those movies in the theaters, and I could just watch them again at home. I do like the Spider-Man films, though. Um, I went to, like, a Superman, the movie re-release for, like, Warner Brothers, like, must have been its 50th anniversary. Jeez. Because um, I'd never seen that on the big screen because I was born, like, that year. Um... Hearts are health, yes. <laughs> Not money. Um, scrolling both ver vertically and horizontally is not easy. Yeah, and there are lots of people in this chat who can explain that to you. This game has eight-way scrolling. It's it's very impressive. Who does this guy remind you of? <clears throat> Listen to these words before I feed you to my birds. I gave the sword to the lighthouse keep. To get to him, you'll have to go through me. All right, so this guy's... Let's see if I remember how to do this. Yeah, okay. Most of the bosses have like little tricks you can do to, to clear them once you learn their patterns. Alright, that's not too bad. It's not a bad introduction. I don't didn't see Spider-Man 2 in the theater. That's why I was disappointed with that. Oh, that is a bummer. That's my favorite one of those the Sam Raimi films. And Spider-Man 2 feels to me very much like it was modeled after Superman 2. Yes, that was definitely Fezzik. Okay. Chapter 2, Into the Harbor Front. You go for Street Fighter 3. <laughs> Alright, Into the Harbor Front. Things start to get a little bit trickier here. Some more pit, pit, potential pit deaths. And more birds. I really don't like the birds. These birds, especially, on, I think, on a CRT, especially, like, they blend into the background. Something fierce, like... Some of them are just completely invisible until they whack in the face. And then here, I start to... Like, sometimes... Sometimes... So, I think sometimes I just have trouble seeing, like, what is actually something I'm supposed to interact with. And now I'm taking, and also I'm, there are multiple routes that you can take. I'm taking, I'm taking a high road, but uh, there are other ways that you can get through here. I thought I was falling into a pit there. Okay. Also appreciate that you can usually 
attack the projectiles. What the? Where did that come from? There's a little moon there. Did everybody enjoy the uh, the eclipse on Monday? All right, so <laughs> so here I'm playing on a CRT. Like that floor is very close to the bottom of the screen. I can almost not see it, but it's it is it is there. Um, Ace is here. Hey, Omega Ace Gaming. If Retro Gaming has taught us anything, it's that villains were highly combustible in the '80s. Hey, Chum Nasty, have I played Full Quiet? Um, yes and no. I, I streamed it when I first got it. I've played it for a little bit. I didn't get too far into it. And then I got slammed with book deadlines and uh, was not able to commit time to it. And I've been trying to kind of ease my way back into it, but I haven't really been in the mood because I know it's a very good game. It's fantastic. It's one of the best NES games, I think, period, let alone homebrew games. Um it feels more like a modern game that just happens to run on an NES. I also know that it requires a huge commitment and time and like mapping and and um, just like effort to, to understand it and play through it. So I haven't yet felt like committing to it. I haven't I haven't had the time to do it. I may start my game over again, um, but I also don't want to lose like even the little progress I made. It's a very complex, very, um, very detailed game like it has it has it's just it's really impressive like it's a really good game like get it and play it however you can uh, on steam on a cartridge uh, i've i've heard that maybe the rom will be for sale soon <laughs> love seeing a human being explode with mega mental explosions right <laughs> have you considered piracy you make a wonderful dread pirate roberts and this game also like i need to rewatch the princess but actually i need to show it to this bud because he hasn't seen it before I think he, um, oh, that's right. I was trying to remember what, what MT contributed. Cause yeah. And it's all in the Kickstarter. If like, if you want to see all the details, maybe not all the deals, but most of the details about how this game was, was made, you'll find all the, many of the answers in the Kickstarter, um, description because Frank and graphics did some of the heads and, um, the way that they designed these enemies is really cool. It goes into a lot more detail than I'd say your average Kickstarter goes into in terms of how the game was actually developed. And they've been doing, um, Jordan and Nathan have been doing a ton of like interviews and things, um, podcasts and, and stuff like that. So um, there's a lot of information out there. Time was we'd get a, a we'd get an episode of uh, the assembly line around now, probably. But uh, I guess it's on hiatus. So Homebrew Game Club, hopefully we'll be stepping up with stuff. Um yeah, the dynamic heads thing. I didn't realize that until I was looking at the Kickstarter, and I was like, "What? It's pretty. It's pretty cool." If you guys don't know what I'm talking, what we're talking about, the enemies have swappable heads essentially, like um, like when you're playing with like Legos or something like that, right? And so you can increase the the number of enemies at least superficially because you're just swapping the heads, and it just makes it seem like there are more enemies than there are. I think that's super cool. Hey, Oak. All right. I'm trying to remember what strats I I, I have. Oh, I didn't even hit him. Do I have any strats? <laughs> I don't have any strats. My strat is to fall. Okay, that's that's great. How did I do this? There we go. Oh. So sometimes you have to find like the right angle to to do one of those jumps. Not today, bird. All right. Um. Nope. Oh, nuts! Oh, wow! That took out a ton of health. Whew, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> Spikes, not a one-hit death, but they may as well be, almost, uh, depending on where you, uh, how much health you have to start with. I didn't even have to kill that guy. Alright, 
Ugh, these things. Spiky, spiky. Well, see, so that's one of those things I was telling you about where, um, like, you have this momentum that just takes you off of the platform. And so my trick in, in Journey to Silius is to just do, do those little hops. And that gives you a little bit more control over your descent and the angle of it. Whoops. Okay. Wait, oh, shoot. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oof. Gosh. I was like, is that one of the ones where the spikes come on the top, too? I don't think they show up in this stage. So that was uh, scary. Oh, all these birds. The NES experience, the birds. Somebody should make a, a home, uh, like a homebrew. Oh, those do go on top. Okay. Should make a homebrew game of like, oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. I'm going to get a death here. I was going to say of Hitchcock's uh, The Birds. Wow. What is going on here? I don't remember this happening to me before. Okay. Oh, frack. Okay. He's dead. Wow. First death. First purchase at MGC. Oh, excellent. You got one of the MGC copies. Cool, because they're like out of print, I think, or it's sold out for now, I think. Hey, Peter's here. How are you doing? <laughs> Good bedtime story for tonight, right? Hey, Mina. Thank you, Mina Rose. I appreciate that. They're doing well. All right, let's try that again. This, this stage, this, some of those spikes are pretty tricky. I lost my, my fancy weapon. All right, I'm not sure why I'm doing this. Almost, come on. Uh, uh. Of course, Jordan and Nathan have seen me play through this game <laughs> several times, and I always record, like, commentary on this. All right. It's these birds. Well, that might be helpful, actually. Freaking birds. If you don't like NES birds... You should definitely check out the trailer for this game. So, so this game doesn't have uh, lives. Like, there's no life system here. It's just you just restart from the checkpoint, and that goes a long way to making it a much more fair challenge and a much more fun game. Oof. I don't remember these birds constantly spawning like this. Maybe I, I don't know. Oh. Might just be taking too long to get through here. Okay, good, we're out of there. Um, so, you know, there's not a huge penalty to, uh, to dying. And it has that, that sense of, like, you know, one more time. I always want to do one more time. Uh, picked up a copy of Mega Man 4 the other day. My buddy asked if I could pick one game from his stuff. I picked that. He said I couldn't look at my list. Oh, no. <laughs> Mega Man 4 was the first uh, Mega Man game I bought brand new. Uh, so it's also the only Mega Man game I have CIB. If I can find the box, it's possibly at my mom's place someplace. But I used, like, my birthday money to buy it. And then I beat the game in, like that weekend and i was shocked and disappointed because you know before that i played mega man 2 and 3 which were a little bit more of a challenge i thought mega man 4 was like way easier next game you're a bird in the world of heavy knockback score points for every adventure you send to their doom hey you're joking but but i'd play that <laughs> Uh, 
Maybe you can trade both copies for a copy of Mega Man 8. Hey, Blue Hedgehog. How you doing? What if someone rents this from Corner Video and beats it in a weekend? They might, but that's okay. There's a hard mode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see you go to a... I don't know what the price value is. Um, go to somebody and say, I, I will give you these two copies of Mega Man 4 for one copy of Mega Man 8. All right. You chased the sword like fools. I gave it to Sadine, the brigand queen. If you wish to pursue her, you must first defeat me in a duel. All right. I try to remember what his his whole thing is here. What's his whole thing here? Okay, forgot about that. Ah, death. That's fine. Mega Dan. I'm not great at telling when he's gonna jump versus his like, like that. That's good. I'm not sure if he has a tell or not. Sometimes I'm just I, I was just getting greedy there. That's all. I actually really like this, uh, that moving light on this lighthouse. Alright, that's not too bad. Great White North. Did I see Great White North come in? I think he did. I thought he was there from the beginning. Maybe not. Hi, Great White North. Meanwhile, at Vector's floating citadel, instruct Sadine to bring the sword to the caves beyond the graveyard. The dark magic found in the depths will reawaken the true power of the sword. The storage sword, now delivered from the lighthouse keeper to Sadine, the brigand queen, is bound for the ancient caves. The savage creatures inside the caves have been sealed within for centuries. If Vector succeeds in reawakening the power of the sword, it will break the seal, releasing the cave's creatures to attack the villages. To keep the villagers safe, our heroes ascend into the darkness. And I really like this, the way that this, this sets the stage, really, for... Well, for the stage. Like, it... it it weaves the levels together so that they f you can get a narrative uh, progression, which is as opposed to you're just like in a new area. You know, Castlevania does that with just with the map, um, and like it is a con sort of contiguous space, and then and then this is kind of doing the same thing. But you also bested my Spaniard. That means you must have studied, and in studying, you would learn man is mortal. I met Wallace Shawn once. I went to a play that he was that he um, directed, I think, in New York uh, with a friend of mine. Um, and I, you know, Wallace Shawn is just—he's a legend. That needs to be a short. You've heard of Gur Math? Mega Man Math. This copy of Mega Man Two and Mega Man Four are equal to Mega Man Six. <laughs> um, YouTube Explorers. I, I did not know that was a thing. Bright Burns. Techno Cop, Sega Genesis. I have to see what Dyer, what Dyer says about that one. Techno Cop. I don't know that one. So before I move on real quick, my one Princess Bride story, because um, I, I have a Princess Bride story, and it's not it's not much of a story, but Princess Bride, so I'm on, I, I'm living in New York City. I'm on the Roosevelt Tramway. There's like a tram that goes to Roosevelt Island, which is, um, and I think it's the only way you can get there, except maybe by ferry or something like that. And I'm on the tram. There is a kid on this tram sitting behind me who keeps muttering to himself in Wallace Shawn's voice, those are the shrieking eels. And he does that whole bit. And then he does it again. And he just does it the entire time. Possibly he was on the spectrum or he just was learning lines. I don't know what his deal was, but it was creepy. It was very creepy. You just imagine you're sitting someplace and somebody just keeps saying over and over again, those are the shrieking eels. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my uh, Princess Price story. Every time I watch the movie, I think about that, that kid. Do you like modded consoles? Um, some people do, I guess. I, I don't think I have any modded consoles per se. Um, like to get better video output or whatever from them. I've just never done that. I've just had other ways to play, play games if I want better output. Uh, my solution was to just get a CRT, <laughs> just have CRTs to play everything the way that, that I remember playing them. 
so yeah Omega Ace has a has a modded console <laughs> um, okay descending into darkness all right this is when it starts getting real they've taken the sword into the caves we will need to be cautious they know we'll hesitate to follow them down there dark magic is perilous chapter three beneath the dreaming world you know I don't remember I don't think I fully appreciated that title before. I really like that. It's very, uh, very poetic. Just like Dad, I have not seen Just Like Dad, but I should. But I have seen Deep Space Nine. All right. All right. So here's a help. Here's a help sign. Um. Yes, I ducked. <laughs> things get a lot more difficult from here on out. If things get too frustrating, feel free to try easier mode instead. You can find it in the main menu. So the game's throwing you a bone. If you start to struggle, uh, you can turn back or you can you can change things a little bit here. Fair warning. I have a modded Sega Dreamcast. It's only card modded. The laser was bad. You know, I've been thinking about that because I got a Dreamcast for Korra and... Um, it, the laser is finicky on it. I, I actually was thinking about it that today, whether I want to like mod it so that it doesn't need to use the the laser. But maybe. I mean, I I like tore out the tabs on my my broken old Super NES so I can put my Super Game Boy Two in there. It's not much of a mod. <laughs> Never go in against Lord Vector when death is on the line. <laughs> All right, I almost took a header into those spikes. Music in this game is great. I hope you're appreciating it. It's fantastic. I love it. Oof. Oh, boy. Go away. Go away, lizard people. All right. Oh, these things. Oh, those things. Oh, I forgot about those jumping guys. They're bad. Cedric wandered into a Contra level. <laughs> kind of does look kind of Contra-y, doesn't it? Yeah, I need uh, I need the spread, the spread gun. I was hoping uh, uh, Thumb Brothers would be able to make it to this stream because he's a big Ninja Gaiden fan. Um, Speedrunner. And uh, I think he would enjoy this game, so hopefully he'll check it out at some point. No. Yeah, I'm taking some some bad bad hits. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what well, easier mode you say? Easier mode. It takes me a long time before I get like good enough at a game to to I, and I don't remember this. When was the last time I stream I played this? Uh, not too long ago, I don't think. But um, I have a very bad memory. And some of this is kind of mes memorization to figure out how you should you know get through some of the challenges. What are you guys playing these days? Uh, so this is one one of those ones where I like to do a little hop here. It's probably not necessary, but um, I haven't been playing too much. I've been just kind of dipping into different things from time to time, but uh, I'm still the main thing I'm focusing on when I have 
you know, the, the consciousness to do it because I've been really tired lately at night. Um, as I've been trying to finally finish uh, Link's Awakening on the, on the Switch, which I got a long time ago and have not yet streamed. Uh, I know I streamed it, but I have not yet finished it. But the Game Boy game is one of my favorite favorite games and my favorite Zelda game for sure. Um, did you guys see the uh, the Rogue Prince of Persia? There's like a a roguelike Prince of Persia game coming, and the design looks really good. I've been kind of on a Prince of Persia kick lately. Um, when I was on my book deadlines, I was kind of plugging away at the NES Prince of Persia, and I'm pretty close to the end of the game. Um, I haven't played it recently. Lately, I just haven't... Normally, normally I only want to play NES games, but lately I've just been kind of feeling like playing... Other things. Oh gosh, I forgot. Ah, and that bird got me. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, these things. Yep. Yeah, okay, I remember those. It's coming back to me. This whole little area here. See, those birds are just really almost invisible in the in the black black backgrounds here until they hit you um so i don't know how to feel about that prince of persia thing but it looks really good i'm probably gonna i'm gonna play that i'm not great at roguelikes the, the thing i i like the way they play the problem with roguelikes is one of the things I like about NES games, uh, old games in general, and uh, but especially NES games, is that they're very hard. But you can you can figure out how to play them and get get through them by like memorizing. You know, like you just improve, right? And roguelikes, it's all skill based. Oh gosh, no! Oh boy, I almost fell down that. Oh no! And then I did. Okay. Um, they're all skill based and and random and you have to level up and it's less satisfying to me in some ways. I don't know. Okay. Let me go back here. I'm sorry I missed a bunch of chat. Have an NES top loaders going to mod, I keep it as is. Yeah, I th I've, I thought about that too. I probably will just get a, a Famicom top loader at some a Famicom top loader, an AV Famicom at some point. Nintendo Wii is a great console. Standard Wii to HDMI adapters don't work on PC mods with HDMI out. Really? Interesting. I didn't know that. I just use my Wii U for if I want to have an HDMI output from a Wii game. Um, <laughs> classic, li classic lines in a classic movie. Amiga emulation. Yeah, I'm actually going to try to set up Amiga on my um, Mr. soon. So I've been eyeing the A500, the Amiga 500 Mini, but I think the Mr. can do as good a job if I just set it up. Lone Ranger. Ooh, that's a nice one. I played a little bit of that one. It kept me in to go back to that one. That one seems like it gets pretty pretty tough. And you've restarted Breath, Breath of the Wild recently. I, I should start Breath of the Wild soon. I borrowed a friend's copy. I have it on the Wii U. Um, oh, we also said farewell to the Wii U online servers this week. I'm kind of bummed. I tried to get back into... I wanted to see what would happen when I tried to play the 100 Mario challenge, and it just it's, it doesn't even let you do it. Playing a lot of Dead Cells. Yeah, I, I, I picked up Dead Cells because of that Castlevania... Well, I had Dead Cells already, but I started playing it because of the Castlevania thing. Um, and then I ended up buying the, the Castlevania release on the Switch, which I originally wasn't going to do, but it was like a good enough bargain. I didn't buy it because I thought there was going to be like more updates later on, and then they said that they weren't going to make any more, they weren't going to support De Dead Cells anymore. And now we know why. They went all over to Prince of Persia. Jordan Davis, uh, he did do the music for this. At least most of the music, right? Nathan's here. Hey, Nathan. Mega Man X8 and Newtopia. Yeah, whatever I'm not whenever I'm not streaming, I'm not playing too much. I'm, I'm still doing Alien Isolation, but I think maybe getting close to the end of that. Hi Carla. P 
PS2 fat. I don't have the PS2. I don't have a PS2 yet. Um, but I will get one. Man, I missed a whole bunch of chat. I'm sorry, guys. I feel the same way about roguelikes. Not a big fan. Yeah, like World SD is the same. Yeah, I feel like I just learned, learned it better. So I, I, I appreciate it. Like, I've been playing through Hades because I like the story. And the, the graphics are great. And it's just it's fun to play. But I'm just not good at it. And part of me, I'm just not interested in the grind, right? So... I like roguelikes and roguelites, and some use procedural generation place level design, and it always shows. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, always shows. Um, I think one game that does a really good job of it, and maybe Omega Ace can speak to this, is um, is uh, the the Super Metroid one, um, which I've just totally blown. Robot named fight. I think the way that he he set up the procedurally generated levels is really smart. Like he set up all these rules about how the rooms generate. Um, and similarly, like there's, uh, but I find to, to, as a counterpoint, like I really like Ancient Dungeon. It's a Zelda ROM hack that Arnpoli made that basically turned Zelda into a roguelike, um, just randomly generated, uh, dungeon rooms, like 255 dungeon rooms that you have to get through to play through the original Zelda. I love it. I haven't gotten through like a full run of it yet, just mostly because I haven't had the time. But there is really satisfying, and I think it's maybe because it's such a familiar gameplay that's been boiled down to um, just the combat. Even though like the puzzles are one of the things you remember most about Zelda games, the combat is is also really really good in it. Your top loader has jail bars. That's like the NES one. That just is kind of built into it there is a i think there's various mods you can do for it it's part of the rf and it's part of the shielding but it's one of the reasons why i don't like my top loader there are ways you can modify it um, if you do an av mod to it there's like there's something there is a way to to get rid of the the jail bars i'm just not sure what what it is it is a hardware mod though there's a thing called uh pretendo chum nasty where you can you can set your Wii U to point to this other community based Nintendo server. I don't know if that works with things like Mario Maker though, but I haven't set it up yet, but I'll, I'll probably try check that out at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to check out uh, Get to Fumaden on Sandwich and Switch on Friday. So um, I don't expect to get very far in it, but I've been curious enough about it. And again, it's a beautiful looking game that I don't know I'm going to necessarily enjoy, but it looks great. I'd rather play through the uh, NES game, though, for sure. Okay, right. Sometimes I find myself overthinking these uh, challenges. And sometimes you just have to you have to just jump and like kill something. Always be slashing your sword. I really like the uh, the arc of this weapon. It, it feels like it has weight, like doesn't it? Like it's a heavy it's a heavy axe. Are these kappas? I think. Or are they just lizard people? I don't, I don't know for sure. I really like kappas though. Oh god. Okay. I don't know why I like kappas so much, but. There it is. Okay. Oh, yeah, this thing got me last time. Okay, I was right there. I was right there. Oh, and then the frog. This section sometimes costs me, like, a lot of time. So we'll see how I do this time. But this section gets pretty rough. Getsufuma is fun, but a serious grind, yeah. So need to be on the high highest difficulty. Maybe has always be splash slashing. Uh yeah, a some uh, it'll probably be one o'clock Eastern time. Partially it's only partially it's because I just want to have a, like a decent sandwich to make this week. I'm gonna I have I have all these eggs from Easter, so I'm gonna make some egg salad sandwiches. Oh, Romhack that replaces all the frogs with lizard from lizard. 
Oh, that makes so much sense. That makes so much sense. Brad, you hear that? You still here? <laughs> okay. Oof. Oh. Wow. Just pinballing my way through that one. Ten your time, got it. It's a little early for a sandwich unless it's like a breakfast sandwich. Yikes! Alright, bye frog. Ah. Uh, yeah, this this stage. Not my favorite. First time that's happened to me. Not by a long shot. The birds. I used to have a better way of getting through here. Ah, what? Frogs of unusual size. Excellent. I don't believe they exist. Yeah, in like an early draft of one of my Ruby books, uh, um, Roman Holiday, I had... Um, so they have enemies called Grim, which are basically just sort of like really large, malevolent, twisted, evil versions of, of Amer like, American, of uh, Earth animals. And at one point, I had something that I was going to call a rouse. <laughs> Just a, it was going to be, like, a large mouse. Um, and I was like, I can't do that. But then I, um, I ended up basing it on a capybara, and I called it a capybara. Sometimes you just change the names of the, the enemies slightly, the, the monsters slightly. So, uh, so there's an evil cap capybara in, in the game. Oh no! Ah, oh, again. Yeah, alright, this one, this one does take me a few run throughs to get this. Um, yeah. Okay, I think I remember how I get through that section there. Rodents of ignore of inordinate magnitude. <laughs> oh wow, the frog killed me. Flying lizard men. They look like um, like m mean fairies. I don't know. I, I think in my head I thought of them as like mean fairies for some reason. The flying lizardmen, sure. I actually find their um, their wings kind of unsettling. Like they they remind me of insects. Large insects. I hate you, frog. Almost as bad as the frogs in Adventure Island. Okay. Oh, nuts. Whoa! <laughs> Alright, I think I just gotta take it slow. Slow your roll, Cedric.
Oh, for crying out loud. I should've just gone down there. Gorn. <laughs> yeah, doing okay, uh, Blue Hedgehog. Welcome back. Yeah, not doing great here. Okay, that's fine. As you can see, this game has some some teeth to it. Oh boy. <laughs> So that sign was really not kidding about the game getting harder here. And like I said, I've played this before and I still still struggle with this, this section. I do think I can finish this tonight. I'm just not sure exactly when it will happen. There's, I think, a couple more spots that I tend to trip up at. Sometimes you can see those things before they attack you. What? Oh, boy. Never mind. And I'm dead. Okay. You own a robot named Fight already, part of a long and storied Steam library. Yeah, right? Hey, Nick's hey, uh, Geek Storian. It's probably the hardest level until real near the end of the game. Yeah, I think that's right. Some of the, that long stretch of the, of the last stage where you can't, uh, or the next last stage where you can't, there aren't that many checkpoints. Like, that's, that's usually pretty rough for me. Um... How you doing, Nick? What the? Overwhelmed is here. Hey, old world gamer, how are you? Been enjoying your your podcast clips. I haven't listened to the podcast uh, interview yet, but I subscribed on my podcatcher and I downloaded the episodes. So I'm looking forward to catching up on your episodes. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a new game. All right. Oh yeah, based on my image. <laughs> Don't listen to it, overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, I also uh, followed your um, followed your Twitch channel. It's, uh, I like I like watching homebrews. Um, I was gonna say. Let's all take a moment and enjoy this beautiful waterfall. You know, I remember once upon a time, I think Franken Graphics was asking about waterfalls, like what NES games had good waterfalls. Was she asking because of this game? I thought maybe it was because of some game she was working on, um, like an, one of her games, but. Um, I mean, this game also has a waterfall in it. Oh! Uh, nope. Not today, frog. Not again today, I mean. Oh, boy. Wow, that was weird. I wasn't ducking, but he was on the edge like he was ducking. I'm not going to try it again, because I will die. But I was ducking, I was pressing down, or you know what? I was pressing like diagonally. Diagonally down. And somehow that acted like he was ducking, but he wasn't ducking. So that's interesting. Okay. And this guy, no. Oh, God. Okay. I'm right there. Oh, thank God we made it. Whew. 
I don't even talk about my stuff to folks here anymore. You should, though. You should plug your videos. I got overwhelmed. Don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> Who dares disturb my slumber? If you wish to pass, you must first offer a sacrifice. Oh, I love this. I love this boss. It's a pain in, he's a pain in the butt, but... I do like this one a lot. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Hold on, I've got some weapons here. Oh, no, don't kill me! No. It's interesting that um, like if if the upward flames hit something, then the downward flames disappear. Okay, I need to get over there. This isn't doing me any good. So you didn't see it because I I was uh, I I stayed away from him, but his tongue like comes out like a big tongue comes out and attacks you. This guy's pretty. Pretty awesome though. This is a really cool fight. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Now I have no now I have no powered up weapon there. Okay, that's fine. Most frames of lip and tongue animation on the NES. Applegate. <laughs> so overwhelmed. Did you actually play uh, the game before the interview? Or did you play the demo? Oh, the hand comes out, not the not the tongue. Excuse me. But that's pretty impressive. His little tongue going though is so funny. I don't remember these 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 bats being such a pain before. But you know, it's an NES game, so of course the bats are gonna be jerks. Okay. Doesn't usually give me too much trouble. Hey, play the demo. I like how this boss looks like he's just casually murdering you. <laughs> yeah, he's just it's like, oh, hey. What are you doing here? <laughs> Oof. Okay. See, do that every three. I forget what the pattern is here. Uh, no, it's just if you get too close. Oh man, what is going on here? Uh, okay, Th that definitely didn't give me that much trouble before. Oh, I've got ten of these. I guess I can use those. And then one of them goes like glancing off of his off of his nose. Excellent. Sometimes you just have to be like slow. It's a very narrow like hitbox there. You really do have to hit him like right in the eyes. some of those flames as they're coming out. Which I appreciate. Whew, that was close. Closer than I like. I'll see you, Dyer. Yeah, take it easy. Hope hope everything goes well, man. <laughs> what you thinking about? <laughs> Chapter 4. The Village Under Siege. That was that was a that was a little rougher, but you know. Doing okay, we're doing okay. I mean again. Um again, um I've played this many times and I I still struggle through sections of this game, so it's definitely quite a challenge.
A lot of the time it's just because I forget, like, where the enemies are. Oh, these ones drop things on you. Or you just ram your head into spikes. Yeah, so so Orchid is better for those guys because she does she does have a an upward arc to her weapon. See, I thought I could land on that that chimney for some reason. Don't know why. Meh. didn't see this. I didn't just do that. Shh. You found a shortcut. <laughs> found a necklace in Castlevania with ties to Middle Earth. Ooh! Is it like a mithril... Mithril necklace? FJ drew the dynamic heads in this stage. Nice. Alrighty. Uh. Mm hmm. Welcome to Sky World. Oh, I have no health. <laughs> now I really have no health. Oh my gosh. Wait, can I just run across these? Oh wow, I didn't know I could do that. It's like a Mario thing. that up sometimes you 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 do something and you instantly know it was a bad idea but you, you've, you're committed to it so I really like that you can run across those blocks like that I didn't know you could do that as many times as I've played this good night sklets waiting for a giant Mega Man 2 only heads to appear yeah the ROM hack you want to see in the world. Bird. <laughs> I couldn't grab onto the platform for some reason. Hey Richard, how are you? You missed my um, ruby Capivara lore. <laughs> it's, oh, come on. They started out as R as a reference to the ROUSs in this game. Uh, in this game. In this in oh, come on. In Princess Princess Bride. You can go to skip from, from finals. Oh, congrats. Nice job. Yeah, the Capivara Grim in Roman Holiday originally was essentially an R.O.U.S. That they're actually I kept it. I kept the line. It's in the book. I totally forgot about this. They talk about the Capivara Grim and I think I think Roman's like I don't believe they exist. I'm pretty sure pretty sure it's still in the book. B 
beat up randomizers. That's an interesting idea, Timothy. I have to double check. I'm pretty sure that line is still in the book. Could have been in an early draft and I took it out. But now that uh, the future of Ruby Ruby is sort of in question, I've, I've been more inclined to reveal some 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 of the things that I previously had had kept pretty quiet. I mean, they're like little little things that. I might be doing another book giveaway because I've realized I have a ton of extra copies of uh, Before the Dawn. Like a weirdly large number of copies. I, I don't know if I gave away a lot of uh, After the Fall for some reason. I guess I gave away a lot of After the Fall and, 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 and Roman Holiday and I just didn't give away as many of Before the Dawn. I don't know. Yeah, I'd have to double check that line, but I'm pretty sure it's still in there. I'm pretty sure Roman says, like, I don't believe they exist. And it's because of it's because of the Princess Pride. <laughs> Which I feel seems like appropriate for like a I was trying to go up there. Oh it's appropriate for like a fairy tale um, story. Oh. Okay. This area confuses the heck out of me because some of these things that I can stand on, I don't know, I don't re re remember that I can stand on them, and some of the paths I don't. I just get confused in here for some reason. I think it's a me problem. happy on my desk. I have 10 copies of my first book that have the dumbest new author error ever. The manuscript was MLA double space and made it to print for 10 copies. Oh, no. That's tough. Well, the the worst error that I don't even know if it's ever gotten fixed, because uh, I never made a, as big of a deal of it as I could have or should have, is uh, my name is misspelled on the title page of the Fairy Tales of Remnant. It's correct on the cover, thank goodness, but on the title page... It's spelled M-E-Y-E-R-S. I was like, well, that happens. That book also has like another typographical error in it, which is a bummer. Um, but they did not... I never had a chance to review the, the proofs before, you know, went to print or whatever. That was that book had a really tight turnaround on it. So I never got to see those things, and then it was too late. It makes me sad because it's a beautiful book, possibly one of the most beautiful books I'll ever have worked on. Yeah, that, that book had a ridiculous turnaround. I was working on Before the Dawn. I think I was working on the second draft of Before the Dawn, and then they asked me if I would be interested in writing Fairy Tales of Remnant. And I was like, yes, but like, they needed it right away. <laughs> oh my gosh, how did I, how did I do that? Um, and I think that was like a, even around like Thanksgiving or something. So it was really, really a crunch. But I'm so proud, uh, proud of how it turned out. I, I just really loved it. Oh gosh, I, f I made it. All right, I got through that faster than I usually do. Okay, Whew, nice save. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, this boss is tricky too. This is one of the trickier bosses, I think. Uh, I usually, I usually bork this one. So the map that I used in my thumbnail for this game, and that's like the overlay and the background of this, um, is actually uh, a map of the stages in the game. And I believe it's in the manual, and I, I know one of the Kickstarter tiers, maybe the limited edition version, has like a cloth, you'll get a cloth version of the map, which is kind of cool. Um, actually, you know, I, sh I, might, I might get that thing framed. I think that'd be really cool. So... Um, you know the 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 manual for this is really is really cool too. Like there's more of the story in it. There's some beautiful illustrations for the game, and um, and there's the map of course. And uh, it's just overall like a really nice really nice package. Um, so look into that if you're interested in CIB copies. One of my one page RPGs got published in a collection for free RPG day by Ninth Level Gaming. Congratulations! 
That is fantastic. I did not know there was a free RPG day, but that's cool that that, that, that exists. So what did I miss about this game? This is a new NES uh, indie game, homebrew, uh, inspired by Ninja Gaiden and Batman the video game, and also um, heavily influenced by The Princess Bride and some other swashbuckling type games. Um, there's a bunch of information about the inspirations for it on the Kickstarter page, like just a lot of history about the game on there. Um, yeah, and it's pretty great. I've been playtesting it. It's it's really fun. It's really good. I clearly am still struggling in some of the sections in it. I just really wanted to to help highlight the game because it's it's on Kickstarter right now. It's already it's already funded, but um, like really well funded. <laughs> but you know you should get a copy while you can. Um, print and, and digital and all that stuff. Um, I have delivered the sword to General Heartbreak, which is also really cool. I love that that name for for a boss, General Heartbreak. The odds are stacked against you. All right, this one. Oh, I always struggle with her. This is uh, Sadine, right? Oof. She's gonna get really mean in a second. Like right now. And I'm almost out. Oh, and I'm dead. Uh, go for it, Richard. By all means. I think Orchid might be better against her as well. Once the floor starts disappearing, I'm like in a huge amount of trouble here. I think that fire does kill you? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, that kills you too. Uh, cool. I'm in the next issue. Also, free reads are always nice. Yes, indeed. You'll have to take a look at that. NinthLevel.com, pages level one. Cool. Ooh, yeah, fire kills you. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. I mean, I could switch to, uh, to Orchid, I guess. Ouch. Oof. Oh, man, almost there. Almost got her. Oh, she got me. At this stage of my career, any writing credit is like winning the lottery. You know what? Um, I think at any stage of, of your career, it feels that way. I mean, but those first ones, those early ones, when you're, it's still, I mean, it's still really cool seeing my name in print, of course. But those early, those earlier um, credits are really special. What am I doing? What am I even doing? Oh, wow. Mm. Can't really dodge this very well. Hmm. You know, I should watch, I haven't watched uh, White Hat 94's um, playthroughs very much, but I bet he's got all sorts of exploits for these things. I mean, he's, he's, he's figured out how to speedrun this probably. Ouch. Oh, and there's a spike up there. Oh, come on. <laughs> She's a tough one. Oof. Oh, 
Hello. Oh, oh you're kidding me. <laughs> no, no, that was it was her. <laughs> How's it going? What's up? Cora was coming to say goodnight. Never seen this game before. Um, I cannot read your name. But hello. Uh, yeah, that's because this is a brand new game. It's a new new NES game. It's on Kickstarter right now. Um, and it's completed. It's, it's, it's done. So it's not like you're going to kickstart it and then have to wait six years for it. Not, you know, naming any names. Um, I just got a notice that my courier, copy of Courier is going to ship pretty soon, which is really great. Ah. All right. So I don't know how long Fulfillment will take on this, but you'll be able to get it pretty soon. Yes, it, exactly. It is like it's like an indie, indie NES game for sure. Yeah, yeah. You can select between the two characters. I'll switch to one. You can switch to the characters when you die. Yeah. Hey, Jono. How are you, Jono Polanka? Hello, Mazin. Is this Zaro on NES? You know, they never made a Zaro game, did they? Here, let's try her for for a, a go here. Because I think she can hit those those things when they're like above her head. See, it's a little different. Oh wow, she is she stronger? Or is she just hitting, getting more hits in? Wow, you have no health. You're dead. Did you? She was still alive. She had no health. That was a good idea. That was a good idea. Um, to switch. Oh my sword! I did forget my sword, didn't I? I did bring my sword. Yep. Sent the stream to some friends. Oh, thanks, Oak. I appreciate that. I didn't realize she was that overpowered, overwhelmed. But she's definitely really good for that that stage. I don't know why I wasn't switching. I just... I don't know. She didn't get the demo. She was dead already. She's only mostly dead. There we go. She's only mostly dead. <laughs> Yeah, this is a this is a different sword. It's uh it's my, my sword of omens. You know. I recently so I got the sword itself, like the main part of the sword, like years ago, because I always wanted one when I was a kid, and then when I discovered eBay and started I basically got this in college when I when I started to work. But it was missing the the pommel, right? It was missing this part of the sword. And this is the part that um screws on and closes the battery compartment so you can actually light it up. And I've had a search on this on eBay for years. I couldn't find any 3D printed versions of this. I should get this thing scanned and have people and, and like make a 3D printed version of this for whoever needs it. Um, I, I could not find any 3D printed versions of it. I couldn't find nobody would sell a, a full sword, let alone just this piece. And then I got a hit last year for this piece. And this piece, like just this part battery apartment, a compartment thing was like 30 bucks. And I bought it because now I have a complete sword. So, but I felt like a, like a fool for, for doing that. <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> it's an intimidating can opener. Yeah. Okay. Our heroes, disguised as prisoners, sneak into the fortress of the old king. They seek to confront General Heartbreak in the throne room. He guards a portal that leads directly to Vector's floating citadel. A rotting heap of muscle animated by Vector's twisted enchantments, General Heartbreak commands Vector's entire army from the throne of the usurped king. Beware his wicked sword. We need to find the portal, but the dungeons will be rigged with traps. 
I was once the princess of this castle. I know the path to the throne room. She reminds me, actually, of Chitara a little bit, like with this design. When we get there, we will meet Vector's elite guard. Let us be ready for them. Escape the old king's fortress, chapter 5. Oh, so I couldn't change my character, but if I die, I guess I'll switch her, switch her back over, switch back over. I don't remember if she has any, uh, oof, advantages in this stage. Okay, well, there we go. I'm going to switch back over. I wasn't ready to play as her. <laughs> sort of Omens, give me time beyond deadline. <laughs> more of a Mandora vibe. Yes, that's true, Timothy. A little bit of more of a Mandora, the evil chaser vibe, who was played by the same actress, of course, because the same, uh, same seven Thundercats actors did like almost all the guest voices on the show. Are you trying to leave? My cat looks like she might be trying to leave. I don't know. Been lurking while car cardio. What was the name of my book with the capybara? It's called Roman Holiday. Um, Ruby, Roman Holiday. Um, very happy that they let me do that as a pun because one of the main characters is named Roman. And it's actually very... Um, it's, it has an extra level of meaning with the book because it's about... Um, this woman named uh, Neapolitan who meets up with a character named Roman, and then he kind of teaches her to live a life of crime. And so, a, a Roman holiday is um, sort of, sort of um, that, that kind of like a, an expedition. Don't want to get the whole game spoiled. Yes, for sure. Thank you, Overwhelmed Gamer. Um, sometimes, what I say about a game, a game like this, where you don't want to get it spoiled, is. Oops, even though you know what to do, even if somebody tells you like what to do, or you, oh, why did I do that again? See, I, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting stuff. Uh, you still have to execute it. Like the execution is is the big the big challenge. Um, or the game will execute you. Ha ha ha! Whoops. This thing. But part of the fun is also in seeing the um, the different level designs. Uh, you, you know, so like right there, it's just you make stupid mistakes because you just I keep forgetting that's that that's there. Can't talk and play sometimes at the same time. Okay. What the? I don't even know what I was doing that. What are the chances of me going to an MGC? Um, not nil. It's not nil. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind going. Um, it would probably be a big expense. I would say it's probably hard for me to get away um, while my while my daughter is very young. Uh, just because, especially like right now at the moment, like because um, my wife is very really busy. Like we have. A, have to kind of divide up the childcare stuff, um, and her schedule is a little bit less flexible than mine, so I do most of most of it. Oops. Okay. But I would like to go to a gaming convention at some point. I'm kind of eyeing maybe trying to go to eh, too many games. Finally, this year I've been meaning to go since like before the pandemic started. But I don't know who all is going to that one. Hey, Captain Algebra. Get me to MGC 2025. I mean, I'll look at it. It's, um, you know, it's not impossible. Uh, yes, Tyler, there is a cartridge available. Uh, you can buy a cartridge, I think a standalone cartridge, or you can get a CIB copy. For sure. Or just the ROM. Yeah, this section is a little bit tricky for me, too. Sometimes I just, like, fall off the walls. Oh, you plan to go to too many games? Are you far from there? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to go cap to that, and then I forget what happened. There was like a wedding or something. Um, in 2019, and then the following year, I was like, all right, this is going to be the year. And then, um, and then pandemic. And then I haven't really thought about going to conventions in a long time, but I still have family in, oh, what am I doing? I still have family in, in Philly, uh, who we often visit. And many of my coworkers are in Philadelphia or in the, in the surrounding areas. So we're trying to plan a get together where I can, I can hang out with them in person because it's been a long time. And, um... I'm looking at that weekend as a possibility. In which case, I might as well go to too many games, at least for like one of the days. So we'll see. So the game teases you. You can see the, the exit there, but you have to fight to it. These are random, I think. Say hi, you're unable to see it. Uh, Good night, Oak. Oh, you're in New Jersey. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, yo, I want to meet all of you for sure. I think it'll be really cool and really weird to see you in person. I've met a couple of people that I, met, I know through YouTube in person. I met um, Nefarious Wes uh, when I when I went to uh, Denver for a convention on why am I doing that on Scholastic's Dime to promote my first Ruby book, and then uh, and I've met the Renaissance, who's now a Twitch streamer. Um, when I was in New York City one day, uh, we met up for lunch and, and, and we went to some game stores, which were very expensive, so I didn't buy anything. But uh, he's very cool. It's really neat to, to meet people in person. It's also kind of interesting because I think, like, so... So I think I act a little differently in, in person than I do on stream. Uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not being totally fake right now, but I, I I'm a little bit more. What's the word? PG <laughs> in, in in on stream. Um, so it'll be interesting to interact with people in real space. Uh, okay, I timed that poorly. Wes is another one I really want to meet. Yeah, he's really cool. I'm a street punk in real life. Yes, for sure. <laughs> why? Why is why do I keep doing that? Every time I just rush right into those spikes. Every time. I'm about to go to Portland uh, for a, a work conference. If anybody's near Portland or in Portland, you go to MAGFest, but my MAG days may be over. I only went to one. I only went to one. You've talked to me off stream, though, Omega Ace. So that's almost almost like the experience. Um, see, I keep doing that. There's enough of a delay there that that like they did that on purpose like there's enough of a delay there that you think it's a it's a clear wall by the time you get there and then it's it's really not um yeah magfest i liked magfest i went once and that's when i met the retrotainment guys originally and, and picked up my copies of homebrew um uh, haunted halloween 85 and 86 oh you can just walk right through that i don't know why i never thought to do that Okay, what am I doing? I need a work conference in Wisconsin. I used to go to um, a science fiction and fantasy convention called uh, Wiscon in Wisconsin. I went to a couple of those. Um, and that was fun. In the, the middle of the country, like stuff in the middle of the country is usually not too hard to get to. Um, so yes, I'll, I've got to go to some conventions out there something on the west coast maybe okay. oh why did I do that what year did I go to MAGFest um, that's a good question what year was it 
trying to remember. I also met Kevin Hanley there and uh, Bo. And I was going to hang out with more more people. They invited me to hang out. And uh, I didn't really, like, pursue it. But and I wish I had. But I felt like I was just getting into homebrew at the time. And I thought maybe they were just being polite. And maybe they were. But, uh, like, they... Or, you know, so I just didn't, I don't know. I, I just felt like I was outside of the, the community and I didn't want to seem like weird, like a weird fanboy or something. Um, even though I am a weird fanboy. Well, I guess because I don't actually make any, any homebrew games <laughs> um, yet. But, um, yeah, what year was that? 2000... I mean, it was after Haunted Halloween 86 came out. It might have been new at the time. If that helps. I have to look it up. I want to say 2018, maybe? Wait, it had some... Maybe it was 2017? Huh. I have to figure it out. I'll look it up later on. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I know I tweeted pictures of it. That's also when I got my Super Game Boy 2. I got my Super Game Boy 2 at at, um, at MAGFest. Um, because I had been eyeing it in the game room. And then the last day it was still there. And it was like marked down. So I got it for like $42. I got a CIB copy of uh, Super Game Boy 2 for, for 40, 42 bucks. I think I actually asked if I could get it for 40 and I got it for 40 Talked to Skyboy more recently. Okay. Yeah, they seem really cool. I'd like to meet them in person. I need to stream Gunhawk soon. timing down but it was all right all right I, i'm relearning this area and just got to take it slow and actually pay attention to what i'm doing okay if we're gonna finish this game tonight because it's like it's 12 already but we're close close to the end There's some some gnarly bits coming up though and i'd like to finish the game but I don't have to, I suppose. Preserve some mystery. Weeks. <sighs> oh my gosh, what am I doing? Oh, wow. I don't know why I couldn't jump on that. Yeah, Skyboy is, is working witchcraft on the NES. That new game they're working on is pretty... Um, pretty cool looking. Early days yet, I guess. And they're doing like a, a Steam uh, version of uh, Fire and Rescue 2, which looks amazing. DQ style RPG. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that again. Okay. Okay. That time was because I was glancing at the chat. So 
so many ways to die. Okay, I gotta figure out why I died here. Okay, I just missed it somehow. Ugh, there's not even any, like, enemies in here, really. Oh, I got the slash thingy! Oh, and then I landed on some spikes. Okay. Game Boy Micros at the convention. Oh man, how much are those things going for now? Why did I do that again? How much are those things going for? Uh, the only reason I have a Game Boy Micro is because some friends gave me theirs. Um, I don't know why. I think they were just, they didn't want it anymore. I don't think they care that it was worth something. It was a while ago. It was probably not worth as much as it is now. It's such a neat thing to have, but it's not a practical gaming machine. I do like the idea of it, but certainly, certainly less so. Why do I keep doing that? Certainly less so with my um, my eyes getting worse over time. Sorry guys, bear with me. This is sometimes very tricky. I'm not sure why I did that. Okay. $250 for Game Boy Micro. My goodness. I am sort of looking for maybe another 3DS, like a new 3DS at some point. Um, they recently managed to get Virtual Boy working on that, which is kind of neat. The GBASP was an elegant machine. Indeed, Richard. If the form factor... I wish... I have a hard time playing the GBASP uh, because I do prefer the, the regular Game Boy Advance, like the horizontal layout. But GBASP is great. And um, I've been, I have a modded Game Boy. I modded a Game Boy with a backlight. And I still will play on my old GBASP. And not even the one... Not even the 101 with the brighter screen that I have. We have a couple of those. But the just the regular one, because it actually um, the screen looks really nice on it, even with the the front light. Um, it's like the only way to really play a Game Boy color like that outside, um, because it still has a reflective screen that they got got rid of later on. All right, CMT, thank you. Thanks for coming by. I should have finished it sooner than this. I don't know. I don't know why it's taking me so long, but that's okay. I mean, it's also the chat hanging out with the hanging out, hanging out with folks. And this is giving a very realistic view of of what the game is like. If I just like powered through it, <laughs> it would look very uh, misrepresentative of of the struggle here. It's it's very real. but very fun to learn. Okay, if you have to jump higher on the wall to get to that. GBA and hammock. When I'm out of DS Lite into a GBA only console, like if you find a broken one, people usually take just the bottom part of that and make it a, um, make it into a GBA. Hey Hugo, Kurume, Kurume, how are you all doing tonight? Thank you all for coming by. Do you guys want to see more? Why did I do that? I'm just gonna let that one. Played a lot of GBA games on my Trapezoid DS. I picked up a, Jap a, a DS, a DS Fat, just because I didn't have one, and it's actually really nice. Like the the, it feels better to play on, I think, than a regular uh, DS Lite, and the uh, the buttons are better.
But I did, I did love my DS Lite. I have a 3DS, like just a regular 3DS, and I haven't really played it as much. I haven't modded it either. I don't, I don't tend to mod my, my consoles, but I have a, a modded uh, DS Lite, or DSi XL, or LL, I guess is the Japanese one, right? And that's actually really nice because it, it runs a bunch of different things. All right, so I need to jump higher to get to that. Oh, I lied. Okay, that's very tricky. That jump there is very tricky. Okay. Oh, come on. Sometimes that happens too. You just you somehow like drop and have to redo the section here. I want this thing. Right? I have to go to the left, I think. I can't go to the right. There's spikes there. Oh, jeez. Lots of spikes. Okay. And we made it. Phew. All right. DS feels better than 3DS. Yes, that too. It does. All your 3DS Street Passes are gone. Yeah. People were asking for um, people to send them for research purposes because they're trying to... You can do the 3DS um, online service through Pretendo as well. Hey, Hums Hero, how are you doing? So thinking about what I'm going to stream next week, um, I might stream. I picked up some more plug and plays. So I have a X-Men uh, plug-and-play, which is a, essentially an X-Men game that most people probably haven't heard of or played before. It's actually kind of, I think it's possibly kind of rare as far as plug-and-plays go because I couldn't find one for the longest time. And then I had a, uh, oh, there goes my sword upgrade. I had a saved search for it recently and it came up and I didn't even hesitate because there were no completed listings for this this, this thing. So I ended up just buying it. And it wasn't that expensive. But so I may stream that, but I think I might wait because Cora will probably want to be there. And also, it might be nice to stream it when Comic Man is around because I know he's a big X-Men fan. Like video game X-Men fan. Thanks. These guys, I hate these guys. The the orbs that keep following you around. Plug and play hype. The uncanny X Men. I did that one already, Cap. I don't think we need to go through that again. Um, but I also have a lot of homebrew games that I've been meaning to play. So I might do some more of those. I just got Sam's Journey, is a new one. I have a huge backlog of homebrew games now, which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous to be in that in that situation, because my backlog of homebrew games is almost as bad as my backlog of licensed NES games. Um, but Sam's Journey just came in. I'm excited to play that one. Um, I've got Gunhawk, which is a zapper game, a homebrew zapper game for the NES uh, by Skyboy Entertainment. Um, who also did Fire and Rescue. I've got. I've just got a lot of homebrew games. Uh, Courier's coming in soon. So I kind of feel like maybe I'll do like a... I might I might do some more homebrew. Um, but I also had been thinking about doing something like um, Epic Mickey or something on the Wii. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. And then, of course, I have, I have more NES games. I have more NES alphanumeric games that I've picked up since... Uh, since Alphanumeric concluded, I have about a dozen or so games. So that's like a couple months of worth of, home, of uh, licensed NES Alphanumeric if I want to get back to that. But I've been sort of mixing things up a bit lately. So I could do more N64. Epic Mickey was fun. Hummus Hero. I started it when it came out. I had it. I got on the Wii when it came out. I was really excited about it. And then I think partially it wasn't... I had some trouble playing it. I just It just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. 
but I think I it was it I got a lot of Wii games uh, late late in the Wii's life where um, oh I know what happened I, I got very busy I got busy uh, for one thing but then I think what happened is uh, I moved and um, wow what the heck and uh, when I moved I was living in New York uh, with Cora and she went to school in, in, in Philadelphia and I stayed in New York because I still had a job and I was looking for new for another job in, in Philly, Philly. And uh, I just like subletted an apartment for a, for a while. And consequently, I didn't really have like a TV to hook up my Wii to. So I just didn't play Wii for like a long time. I didn't play any console games for a while. So, but I also was like very busy. That was a very busy time for me. Uh, Writing-wise, I was like really focused on getting published. Um, got to play four-player X-Men Arcade. Oh my gosh, that's quite the crowd. That's really cool. That is a great game. I would like to meet meet that crowd as well. Uh, let's see here. Wow, the knockback is no joke. All right, we're gonna finish this game. It's very because I'm very curious about the final boss here. I want to. I hear that it has been changed slightly. Like the attacks, the attack patterns are different, so I'm kind of curious about that. I think uh, LJN games are perfectly fine. Many of them are, anyway. Don't believe the hype. Or the negative hype. Oh, come on. Very terrible section here. Switch back to Orchid, I suppose. It's kind of a neat idea because I I actually don't tend to switch um, characters in the middle of, of a stage, but it makes sense. Hate hype. I mean, if this was a game where you could switch characters like in the middle, you know, by pressing select or something, I would do that, right? Uh, unless you're going for like a certain kind of run, I suppose. Like a Cedric only run or something. These things are very persistent. They just follow you around for screens and screens and screens. also stream that demo. I don't actually don't know how long the Rugrats demo is, but I could stream that. I might just do a video for that. <laughs> Funny. Alright.
Yeah, you want to drop a link to one of your um, Castlevania shorts, Ace. People can watch it while I'm trying to do this. <laughs> you won't miss anything, trust me. Sent you a polo. Oh, talking to Peter. Uh, I mean, your recent one, yeah? One of your more recent ones? Reinhardt, I guess. Since uh, Actually, Reinhardt would be a good one since I streamed uh, Castlevania 64. His arc is really not good for that, that jumping guy. Very flea man like. Alright, so here, I'm going to jump this way so that that guy won't attack me right away. They really do. They really do. Oh, that one's members only. You, oh, good night, Peter. <laughs> um, do you make those uh, public eventually, Ace? Oh my gosh. Wow. That went very badly. Oh, Ryotsuki. Nice one. That's a good one, too. They'll go public after two weeks. Okay. Huh. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the amount of research that goes into them, and then the, the, the editing for such a short video is very impressive. Like, the quality... Definitely shows. All right. I thought I would finish this game sooner than this, but that's okay. Actually, did I? I, th I think I did, but I think the chat. I'm being, trying to keep up with the chat has slowed things down a little bit. A little bit. Not a lot. I'm also just rusty. get very easy to just, you know, get stuck taking damage because of, you ended up in a bad spot. And these things really will not go away until you kill them. Even after their master is dead. Okay. Ooh. 
Oof, that was lucky. Alright, this section is evil. drop down and do a wall jump from that platform. Speaking of which, um, also the Indie Gamer Chick gave this game a very nice review recently. Which, uh, I trust her reviews very much on Twitter. She's never led me astray. She has really thoughtful reasons for why she doesn't like something, and I usually can totally see it. And I agree with her. And then uh, games that she recommends, uh, I think they're pretty much always really good. So, yeah, I definitely trust her, um, trust her reviews. This is one of the levels I struggle with. to die here. I'm looking forward to Madison Power's uh, no death run of this game, though. <laughs> what? Ah, oh, dang it. I was looking at the the chat, and I didn't see that, that orb coming at me. Let's look at Omega Ace's comment. Maz has been playing a lot of uh, modern retro games. I think he did Prison City. And, uh, what was that other one he just did? Oh my gosh. I think another one I was interested in playing. Do we know Ace has, uh, I don't know if Mazin's still here, has Mazin played uh, Shovel Knight? a while ago. Okay.
have it on my 3DS. Oh, okay, so you didn't stream it. That's what I. That's what I meant. Like you hadn't streamed it, right? Because I don't remember seeing you play it. I still have to finish it myself. Play it as the Amiibo Custom Night. Yeah, I have it on uh, Steam, um, and I have it on the Switch. I got the physical copy on Switch, and I started it a couple times on on Steam, and I streamed it once. But I never finished the game, so I should just finish it. <clears throat> I mean, you should you should stream whatever you want, of course. Or you can play it like a new game or whatever. If you're already beating it, then maybe you're just not that, in, you know. You may not want to stream it again. Or play it again, rather. Orbs are really miserable. I don't know where that came from, and I did. What's this? A video game? Hey, pal, Puck. How are you doing? <laughs> you and the other use. Started doing stir exercise again and I'm beat. What does that entail? Just going going up and down the stairs?
Some pretty evil uh, on bleachers have to stop for winter. Okay. Pretty evil knockback. Related to Orchid from Killer Instinct? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm struggling here. Right? I'm supposed to drop down. No, I'm not. Okay, that that that's I think I kept trying to do that the last time I played this too. And you're just supposed to just be able to do it. But sometimes I try to do it and I can't quite make it. Okay. Yep. And then I started to remember just now that maybe I wasn't supposed to do that. Okay, great. thinking that, oh, I have to drop down and jump off the wall for some reason. I know you have to do that someplace, somewhere else, later on, but it's not there. That would be really annoying if I died right there. Okay. Really check out... what? I don't know what that means.
Oh, good, the flame birds. Love them. First time the knockback helped me. Is it here? Okay, yes, you need more of a platform in order to do it. Okay. Yikes! Oh. Yeah, this is one of those levels that, like, maps around quite a bit. And if you fall, you end up having to redo a lot of it. Which isn't great. Firebombing birds. Fireball went straight down. Yeah. Oh, okay, that jump is sometimes really tricky. Jerk. Oh. Just like that. You lose a lot of progress. And death. Did you really check out LJI? Freeware platform. LJI? Nope, never heard of it. Freeware platformer. <laughs> Keep the quotes coming. I like free. I like platformers. Freeware, though. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's that stage where you just can lose a lot of progress if you get knocked over. Capital I, J, I. Okay, E, G. Get 
guess you should leave some of those power-ups for, like, if you have to repeat the stage. Necklace exchange hands so many times. Oh man, that's gonna be a good video. It's gotta be fun. Like one of the fun things about writing writing uh, fiction is when you go down one of those rabbit holes and you just find out all this really fascinating stuff uh, while you're doing the research and. Your videos, I'm sure, must have their rabbit holes, too. Some of it's just stuff you'll never use, but... Oof. make that jump. One of the fun things about writing is to be on deadlines, right? Hey, Jim. Twelve tabs open pertain to different location characters in Middle Earth. Oh my gosh, you need the Silmarillion for that. trouble than it's worth. Don't. Mistake. Pay for it. Wishbone. <laughs> Be funny if you could activate like channel uh, things on my on my channel from for Omegas. Oh come on. things pass through those platforms. Nope. Okay, that's fine. Uh, here. Okay. Just move on. There. Probably should have taken that axe. Shame to admit I almost forgot about the stream. Oh, that's okay, Jim. 
there's lots of streams out there. All right, my mission is complete. The sword is beyond the portal with Vector. Now to collect your skulls. All right, this guy. Oh, I'm trying to remember what this fight is. Oh, this is right. Okay. Okay, well, death. That's fine. Thank you, Richard. Nice throne room. up there uh oh my gosh i didn't know he could do that uh what whoa <laughs> all right we found a bug guys <laughs> um that's funny oh no this does not have lives this does not have lives I think he was because was, he was off the screen, the side of the screen, and somehow he ended up just, uh, walking on air, I guess. are outdated like quarters <laughs> yeah it's just there's lots of checkpoints which I would much rather have anyway Yeah, he's pretty he's pretty brutal. Some of his later bosses are really tough. Oof. And, and if you walk into spikes, then you know. His range is just a little bit longer than yours. Unless you have the splash slash weapon, which I don't have. I had it very briefly. This is Raftronauts and um, Nathan Tolbert's um, game. Oof. Whoa, he ducks too? Yikes, okay. Yeah, this is a tough fight.
think I usually come in with more projectile weapons. Dash is a hard one to dodge, yeah. And they have perfect timing. I like that these weapons are like, I think these ranged weapons are really limited. last section is a little tough. With the sword, Vector will be unstoppable soon. Nowhere will be safe from him. We must enter the portal to purge Vector from the coast and avenge the kingdom. The portal opens on the citadel cliffs. Assault on Vector's castle. Citadel, rather. This last section is a little tough. <laughs> Almost type gag. <laughs> gag. Much longer stream than I anticipated, but we'll get through this. These things. Oh, this section is really bad. This is a very bad section. Thank you for the GGs. Yeah, this section is, is a bit brutal. <laughs> yeah, the waterfalls uh, push you push you over the edge unless you're in the center or you're crouching. Oh, what? Yeah, the nice the splash animation is quite nice. Jim. I'm glad you made it. Those are good quotes, Richard.
Oh, nuts. Forgot about the waterfall. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Doing well, yeah. Oh, I forgot I can cancel that fire. Oh, no, well. Okay, well that's good to know. I think, I don't think I remembered I could do that. How he respond. Tricky. Yeah, there's a ninja guy in like respawn for sure. Thank you. 
Phoenix. Oh my gosh. section after this isn't too bad. These birds just keep coming. Thanks, Nick. Take care. Get some rest. Appreciate you coming by. Um, this, the game has changed, like it's evolved, uh, since I played, and I think it's generally pretty well balanced. This section's still pretty hard. I think this was hard the last time I played this, too. Um, I don't think they've made it any harder, necessarily. Um, the next section, I think, has, has a change that I'm not, I don't know what it is. Um, I, I don't know what to expect yet. Oh, good night, Chum Nasty. Um, the final boss, I've consistently been able to cheese, like, in all of my playtesting, and apparently in the le this version, they've changed his pattern, so I can't cheese him anymore. So, I'm not sure how that fight's gonna go. Sorry, I'm also a little distracted because I can hear my my daughter crying and I'm waiting to see if she's going to settle down or, or not. Sometimes she just wakes up, like, in the middle of the night, cries for a little bit, and goes back to sleep. Oh, okay. Uh, there is another tricky section after this, actually, if I recall correctly. With, like, very few checkpoints, so this is tough. Okay. Yeah, this last stretch is a little rough. Your invincibility frames don't last long enough for you to actually be able to just, like damage boost yourself through there. Man, this is tough. I wonder if, uh, I mean, Orchid might be better here. Let me try her. She doesn't have as much range on her weapon, though. I'm not sure she's much better. Last time I played through this, I did play with her, though.
Need to find a character that can swim. Uh, we need a Belmont in here. <laughs> Belmonts can't swim. I'm not sure if she's any better. I just need to jump again instead of pausing on that platform. I might be too cautious here. I figured I would go after that low bird. There is a death counter in this game, by the way. And it tells you how many times you die in each stage. This will be interesting to compare. I think I'm doing poor, more poorly now than I did the last time I played this. And I'm not entirely sure if anything's changed. Oh, that might be a thing. Does that... Do those birds go to your height? Do they go to a certain height? Let me try that. Can you, like, force them to spawn to a higher height? It looks like you can. deaths here. this before. Go, go, go. Oh my god, get in there. Okay. Alright, this section is a little bit tricky too. And there are fewer checkpoints. So, you have to kind of go through this whole stretch all at once.
Oh. <laughs> I think a lot of game would probably a lot of people would probably not do well with this game. Feeling cute might rate the fridge. <laughs> I appreciate you guys hanging out so long with me. I mean if you can be Battle Kid, anybody can beat this. I mean anybody who can be Battle Kid can beat this, I mean. <laughs> Let us know what you find in there, Omega Ace. So she definitely makes this easier. Because she can hit him from down here. And I cannot. It's not very easily. Chicken sandwich or a small bowl of clam chowder. Those both sound good. How about both? I think those would complement each other nicely. Depends on how hungry you are. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Just die. I like those flames down there. They're quite nice. Okay. I just want to finish the game. I know I can do it, because I've done it before. I want to see the new boss fight. When I am clams are shady, but <laughs> if this image is grilled, then it's vital pairing. Cheek and gizdi. Disappear, I think, if you just wait here. I think he's gone. Yes. Oh, shoot. Oh. No, there's no checkpoint, I think, until you get to the end of this area. This is like the last stage, pretty much, so. I think they just really step it up. But it's not too bad once you get used to it. Quesadilla. Alright, that's a good that's a good choice. 
Are you making that from like scratch? Or do you have some like pre-made quesadillas that you're like heating up? I guess they're not too hard to make, right? I should probably make quesadillas more often. What am I doing? You might also have a chicken quesadilla. Hmm. My daughter had settled for a while, but I can hear her crying again. I'm waiting to see if my wife will go. <laughs> My platforming skills typically do 20% better when people discuss food. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm going to go check on my daughter. I shall return.
Okay, sorry about that, folks. I'm back. What did I miss? What's going on here? Okay. Sorry. It's, uh... Oof, it's getting late. Daughter needed some soothing. Hopefully she'll be okay. I needed a little break, too. stretch here though. Thank you, kind of. I think I actually will switch to Orchid on my next um, death. She will help with those knights. these ones. This one. Like, I don't understand why he doesn't just die. She has less health, doesn't she? Maybe not. Maybe she has the same amount. She can hit things that are coming at her from above. love to play through Boku de Upa someday. Yeah, I mean... I think she went north. I, um... So she can just hit him like this. I will just play through it on the overdrive, I think. She can get rid of those things pretty easily. I ever noticed that that waterfall is that waterfall going down or up? It's 
switch back to sacred care. Or is it like frozen? So it'll be, it'll be interesting, interesting to see how this boss fight has changed. All right, here we go. I'm gonna try. So you dare interrupt me in my study? This intrusion will not go unpunished. The sword is mine, you may not have it. So normally, whoops, oh well, never mind. Looks like it's going up, GW says. So in this in this fight you have to um, grab the sword that's up here. And normally what I would do is I would just stand here and wait for him to show up. But he supposedly did something to make it so that I can't do that. Oh, he may not come over here. Is that how they did it? He just might not come over here. Oh, there he goes. All right, that's not so bad. Can I not just, oh, shoot. Can I not just keep doing that then? Because that's how I normally would do it. Whoops. Hmm. I'm gonna try it again though. It seems to still be working. That's what they did. He shoots this thing at you that makes you drop your sword. Okay, that's sneaky. So I used to be able to just kind of stand there and he would just keep manifesting in front of me and I could just, you know, take him out. Ouch. But now I have to move around, it looks like, in order to take him out. And it's not going well. Quesadilla was the right choice. It sounded pretty good. Mm. All right, so now I have to I have to just like, get in there. What am I doing? I'm just, I'm just gonna kill myself. All right, I gotta take it slow through here too. Looks like I'll actually need my health for this last fight. I think the only thing that can damage him is that that sword, that magic sword, because it's a storage sword. So, yeah, um, Orchid definitely has less health than uh, than than Cedric. The fact that he now throws that like just ahead of him. It's tricky. You can't hit it though. can do it. <laughs> That's funny. Nice. <laughs> no more cheesing vector. Dodge him. And I can hang out over here. 
let's see. Nope. Okay. I guess, can you dodge that shot though, maybe? Let me see. It really was, uh, you know, I think they, they said, they said, you know, it doesn't, it makes that fight trivial, like when I, the way that I was doing it before. Let me see if I can do it. Just do it. I can't just do that. That's fair. All right, I'm just gonna have to earn it. <laughs> Whoops. I did come by that strat, honestly, though. Yeah, maybe. It's, um, I have to get out of his way. Yeah, this is an end game. This is the last boss. Um, I guess they really did make him harder. <laughs> it was definitely not that hard before. Which makes sense. He should be hard. So it's it's a cool mechanic because you have to you have to attack him with that sword, but he keeps knocking it away. And 
you don't want to have him touch you. My sword! Oh no, my sword! <laughs> it's actually actually appropriate here. No, ah, oh, man. Okay. The fact that you can only get up there from one side of this platform. sometimes. Eh, okay. I gotta watch that knockback, so I'll just knock you right off the platforms. Oh no, see? Mm, I need to get out of the way. So that sword, I think, protects you somewhat. So if you don't have the sword and he hits you, then he knocks you, like, way off. brutal here. I honestly find this this section with the books a little bit tedious. Um, just like, let me start the fight again. But I get it. It's sort of like an opportunity to make you lose health. I just gotta keep moving here. jump up to that platform from that middle section there. I don't think that'll work. 
Whoops. That's not even... Um, he also has a second form. Which can be a little bit tricky. Or a second phase to the fight. Loop around? I didn't notice that before. You know, there's two of them. That's great. Okay, interesting. These gems just will loop back and forth if you don't take them out. Ideas are known for knockback, also. Okay. Hey, Vash. Hope you're feeling okay. Yes, but last fight is harder than I expected it to be. get him to show up in the middle more often. Ah, 
can't take risks like that, like just jumping to take out that projectile. Maybe I should use my um, projectile weapon on those. I don't know if that would do anything. I'm not sure if it would work on them or not. <laughs> food. Someone say food. I love this weird little space, though. As annoying as it is to have to play through it over and over again. Choose, you know, just be pickier about it. Ow. Oh. Hitting me from the behi from behind is pretty, pretty mean. any health on that section. The sword returns my memories, but each is more painful than the last. Magic will be my armor now. Take this cursed sword and be away with you. 
Got him. Really would be good to get there with more health. Beat me twice. What am I doing? Nah. Okay, we're almost done here though. It's a long stream. wanted more hearts. Trying to mine for hearts. Thank you. I um, could use some more health though. fight. Oh, we're almost there. Ah. Thank you. 
Don't. <laughs> final boss for sure. Unless they added an extra, extra final boss. This is the run. <laughs> Thank you. Nope, that's not the run. <laughs> yeah. Ah. I hate losing health in this section. Alright, I'm just gonna kill myself. The true final boss will my daughter waking up moments before you beat the guy. She's been kinda off and on, like waking up and fussing and going back to sleep. plan to get that Rugrats game. Gonna have to check out that demo. If you don't take these things out, they just come back and haunt you later. It's probably in my best interest to clear the area. One sword, two sword, three sword, mwah. <laughs> Orchid might be good for that fight too, but then she has less health. Sometimes he just appears right in front of you.
Hoping there was some way I could just hang out up there and farm for health or something. I guess not. when he just like spawns in, in exactly where you are. side of the, the, the stage. I don't know if I can do it in that stage, then. Maybe. Maybe I can. I don't think it's really their intent that you'd be able to do that. But you can do it. Okay, great. Okay, that'll help. I forgot that I could do that. I want you to just use that platform on the on the right, but just because of the way that the game was was made, you can jump off the side of the stage. So I'll take it. I'm no longer trapped over there when he does that. There we go. We did it. Yay! 
Yeah, that was a game changer, remembering that I could jump off the side of the, the screen here. With Vector defeated, his citadel crumples into the sea, carrying his body and the sword under the waves. Orchid, the lost princess, reclaims her throne from the, vi from the evil usurping sorcerer. Cedric returns to his anonymous life protecting the villagers. Sunrise breaks and the curse is lifted. A new day begins. Vector's reign will not soon be forgotten. Yeah. Classic, right? First form is harder, yes. Well, the second form is harder if you um, keep blundering into the shots and you um, have low health to start with. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that definitely changed things a little bit. <laughs> cool. Alright. We beat it legit. Just me and my sword. Me and my sword, we did it. Cool. Well, anyway, that was, uh, that was a much longer stream than I thought. I thought it was going to be half this time. But, uh, I had fun. Really cool. Rejoice! Rejoice! There's the end credits. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Ace. Anyway, I hope everyone uh, enjoyed the stream and thinks the game looks cool. Please check out the Kickstarter if you're interested in getting a copy of it. Yeah. All right, yes, 222 deaths. That's a nice even number. This is probably my worst run ever. That's that's really cool, though. They should show me which stages I died the most into. Or maybe it does that in, like, the next the next screen here. Here, let me picture this. 222, nice round number. And I got hard mode unlocked. <laughs> I've had better runs. Thank you, guys. Alright, so then... You can look at your achievements. Yeah, it tells you how many l deaths you have. 117 in level 6. Wow. 75 in level 5. I'm gonna compare this to my other stats. That's ridiculous. Well, the game definitely gets harder. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's probably my worst performance in this game ever. Alrighty. So, I'm not sure what, what I'm doing next week yet. Um, possibly another NES homebrew game. Possibly the X-Men Plug and Play. I also have a, a Batman, um, like, Brave and the Bold Plug and Play. And I have a Fantastic Four Plug and Play. So I could just do a different Plug and Play next week. Uh, we'll have to see. Maybe I'll, do a, maybe I'll do a little poll to see what I should do next. Alright, thank you again, everyone, for hanging out. Um, again, check out the Kickstarter, uh, tell your friends, and, uh, looks like Ace is, is up for a plug-and-play. Plus, I still have the Spider-Man one, I have the Superman one, so, yeah, thank you. I hope, I hope my daughter will continue to sleep, too. I'm gonna get to bed in case she wakes up again in the middle of the night, and then I need to go help her out. Okay, I hope you all have a good rest of the week. Um, tomorrow's Thursday, Comic Man's on, um, at a conference, so... I don't know if he recorded a Zelda stream for tomorrow morning or not. Um, but there should be some sort of a premiere. And then tomorrow night, I think Great White North is going back to Valis 4, Super Valis 4. And Friday, I'm assuming Omega Ace is going back to Mega Man X8. You're going to finish that up, right? And uh, Mazin may be streaming on Friday night. I'm not sure. <clears throat> and then Friday... Lunchtime, I'll be doing Sandwich and Switch, and I'm thinking I'm going to do Getsu Fumaden, Undying Moon, for like an hour. We'll see what the game's like. Cool. Thank you so much, Vash. Oh, man. I'm a big fan of you. Thank you so much. All right. Take care, everyone. All right. I will catch you all later on. Bye-bye.